Sure. So I was wondering, like, maybe uh, for last minute things for those who are parents listening in, who are who are um, on this mission to build a more inclusive church, a more loving church, um, and they want to make sure their children are being raised properly. And any advice you'd have for parents on raising anti-racist children? Yeah, that's a great question. That's a that's a unique one. I don't. Um, yeah, I don't get that one usually, but um, I, I think it's a great one. I mean, I think that um, you know, I think that uh, you know, there there black people and white people have very, and I, I come from a, actually a mixed parent household, and so black people and white people have very different and very opposing uh, parenting methods, <laughs> and that's something that that's something that I think we've carried from the African continent because black black parents. Uh, I would say in general, and these are generalizations and nothing, no generalization is true for everybody. But in general, you know, I think a lot of time, and there's some good in this, white parents uh, love the idea of encouraging their children's individuality and and nurturing their children's individual voice and not being too kind of authoritarian or, or, you know, but really wanting kids to feel free. And that's good in many ways. But I think that a lot of times, honestly, even in the way that white people sometimes parent can in and of itself exacerbate white supremacy. Uh, I always tell people if you don't, for white people, especially if they don't want their kids to grow up acting like they're the center of the universe, don't raise them like they are and, and, and help them to learn that from an early age. And that's, again, not to, you know, um, you know, uh, there, I think there's a lot of good in like white parenting styles as well. But I think that, as you said, addressing race and racism, and this is for all uh, people, uh, people of color, but especially for white parents to really be able to um, discipline their children in godliness, as the word tells us, and really discipline them in in racial solidarity. Um, and I think also, uh, but also especially for and for all people, but especially for people of color, I think it's really important to surround their kids with positive images of themselves and be very intentional about that. Um, you know, and to, and that's that is extremely hard to do. Uh, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of going and finding things to find cartoons and books and 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 events and and things to put kids around. But we, my my wife and I, we you know, my wife is Puerto Rican, so we have multiracial children, and we are we are very intentional about like having our kids in in programs that are not only with Latinos but that are in Spanish. And then we have them in black programs, uh, like swimming classes and gymnastics program. We have them in white programs as well, because we want our kids to know how to be around all people. But we especially emphasize like with our books, we have them read or play dates. We get together. We want our kid. We, we have to be very intentional to make sure our kids are around other all of their background. And we also have they have Asian and Native American friends as well, because we want them to be exposed to. Uh, their own culture and their own identity and see themselves reflected, but also to learn how to be around other people from a, from a very young age and not only racially, but also socioeconomically. We want our kids to know how to flow in the hood. And we also want them to know how to flow in the suburbs. And, and so um, that's something that I would just say is like, yeah, like addressing issues of racism and also critiquing what they're watching with them so they can notice it. Like even little things like my kids are so woke. They're only nine and 11, but they're like, woke to me. Like they'll be, they'll be pointing out stuff all the time. Like that's racist, you know, like, like we'll be watching a movie, a cartoon. Right. And then as soon as an Asian character comes on the screen, all of a sudden you hear like a gong in the background mm. or you hear like an Arhu playing or something. And the music sounds Asian all of a sudden. And my kids will be like, that's racist. They're only playing Asian music now because the Asian person's on. And I'm like, yes, that's right. There you that's go. Yeah, yeah so I love like, that. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. That's fantastic. Oh, uh, what a beautiful message! And I, and I think the keys there you're talking about is like just being intentional as parents, um, and also just being intentional at everything about how do we be aware of white supremacy? How do we be aware of what we're taking in, whether it's the media, the books we're reading, and what are we doing to? Um, to educate ourselves, to be intentional, to grow in empathy and and keep learning. Like it's never ending. We we have so much to learn and it's beautiful to hear what you're practically doing with your kids to expose them to um, all different types of ethnicities through the different programs that they're in. Like what a beautiful experience they're going to be growing up in. And um, so that, that is what, what a great example you're setting. Hey, thank you so much for checking out this video clip from the Dogato podcast. To get more videos like this, simply subscribe here on YouTube. You can also download the full episode of each show on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, or your favorite podcast player. Take care.